Minimal APIs were released as part of .NET 6. Now, as the name implies, a minimal API is a brand new syntax that you can use to structure your API endpoints and code, but meant to make it simpler and cleaner. Now, just because Microsoft said something is better, that doesn't necessarily mean that we should all just automatically jump on the bandwagon and ditch the older controller-based API syntax. No, 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 no. Not on my watch. So what I'm going to cover in this video is my opinion of if it's worth using a minimal API within your project. Now, in order to allow you to make an informed decision, I'm going to walk you through a practical example. Now, to demonstrate this new syntax, I built an API called the Chuck Norris API. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I set up that API, as well as how to hook up some endpoints. Now, before we get into the thick of it, I want to admit something. This is actually the second time I recorded this video. And what you're seeing right now is not my original idea. Now, sadly for me, I didn't feel like I could release the first video because it was recorded a few months before .NET 7 was released. The issue was my original video didn't take into consideration the new features released within .NET 7 around minimal API. Uh -oh. So carry on watching if you want to learn if these new features have convinced me to turn to the dark side. Now, before we get onto the code, the most important prerequisite you need to make sure that you've got installed on your computer is the smashing on the subscribe button and clicking on like. Now, if this is the first time that you've come across this channel, my name is John and I release a new video every Sunday that will help you build enterprise grade websites and make you a coding legend. So if you like .NET development, this is the channel for you. And as a thank you from me to you, I'm gonna show you a picture of Chuck Norris. For experienced.NET developers, creating a minimal API class for the first time will feel strange. Now, the reason for this is that you can get rid of all the fancy ceremony of creating a class. Now, I think what Microsoft means by fancy ceremony is basically removing the few words it takes to define a class and getting rid of a few curly braces. Now, the end result is going to look a lot more like a Node API compared to a C Sharp API. Now, as part of Minimal API, you'll get access to extensions to define the different types of REST API endpoints that you want to request. So you're going to get access to things like map get, map post, and map put. So to define a Minimal API, you can use the method that you want to represent your HTTP request. Then you can add the API endpoints, and then you can define some additional parameters that you want to be injected into your API. Now, an important thing to note is these parameters can also be injected from the .NET Core Dependency Injection Framework. This means you can completely follow your solid principles within this code. Let's recap what this API is doing. So it's going to take a post request because we're using map post. The name of the API is going to be slash joke by category. Then after that, we're passing in an additional parameter, which is called category. Now, we're mapping this to a string. And then additionally, we're using dependency injection to pass in this iChuckNorris repository API. Then all the function is doing is calling this API, passing in the category into this get by joke category. And then if we go to implementation, what we can see is this is now making an HTTP web request. We're calling the api.chucknorris.io endpoint. Finally, we can see this API working. All we need to do is fire up our Visual Studio debugger. From here, we should then get access to a log, which looks like this. And from here, you'll be able to get the port that the API is running on. Then after we've got that, we can fire up our Postman. In here, you can see that I'm doing a post request. I'm going to that port. I've got my endpoint joke by category. If I do a send, you can see then that I'm getting data returned from my API. Getting started with a minimal API is simple enough. All we need to do is open up Visual Studio. Now, obviously you need to make sure that .NET 7 is installed. And if you haven't already got .NET 7 installed and you want to understand why you should install it, the good news is that I've recorded a video which goes over the best features of .NET 7, which you can find in the related tutorials that are linked to below. Now, in order to create a new project, we want to go to this create a new project option. From here, we can pick from a .NET template. So we want to make sure that C Sharp is installed and then we want to use this ASP.NET Core Web API. Now, clicking on Next, we're going to have to give it a name. I'm going to create it here for the time being. Clicking on Next again is where the interesting part comes. 
Now, if you want to create a minimal API, you need to make sure that this box here is unticked. So as you can see here, when it's ticked, it's used controllers, and this means it's gonna be using the old syntax. Now I'll also say that if you want to use minimal API, it's obviously likely that you want to create a clean syntax. So it's probably a good idea to also not use the top level statements. So make sure that this one is ticked. Now also in here, we wanna make sure that we have .NET 7 and then click create. Now where developers start to lose it just a little bit is when they first open program.cs and they see the code syntax. Now, when you use the default API, you should get the weather forecast API code installed. Now, I'm going to go through my Chuck Norris API code instead. However, as you'll see, Pokemon.cs, it looks a little different. So let's have a look at this in action. We can see that in my file, I've got my code to register my API. You can see I've got code to do my middleware registration, some code to do my dependency injection, and I've got a bunch of API endpoints. And this is a bit of a mess. Now, personally, I've been performing code reviews for about 10 or 20 years. And if someone sent me a PR with everything jumbled within a single file, let's just say that PR is not getting merged. The reason why I'd fail that pull request is obviously because this code breaks the single responsibility principle. This principle says that each class should only do one thing. And obviously our program.cs is now doing multiple things. Now, at first glance, I think this would put most professional developers off. And for me, it kind of felt like Microsoft was creating a new syntax to try and persuade no developers who didn't know anything about .NET to use .NET. Now, to counter this, I'd say that just because this is the way that the default template works, this doesn't mean this is the way you need to architect your code. This is why I strongly recommend that if you really want to use minimal API, that you should always refactor program.cs in a way that makes sense for your code base. Now, I've done a complete video that walks you through how my old API that you just saw will be refactored into the code I'm about to show you. Now, if you'd like to see a deep dive into that process, then I've recorded a video all about it that you can find at the end of this video. You're welcome. Opening up my refactored program.cs, you can see that the code is much simpler and cleaner. And one of the main reasons how I accomplish this is through extension methods. Within my program.cs, you can see that I've got three main extension methods that I've made use of. One which is called register application services, one which is called configure middleware, and one which is called register endpoints. Now, clicking on each one of these, you'll see that I've abstracted my code into easier, smaller to digest methods. One of the main code syntax things I really hate about minimal APIs is that in your code, you're still going to have to have classes like this, where we have our modifier, we have the class declaration, we have a name. So this means that we're going to have a hodgepodge of traditional class syntax and new ones. Now, one of the big issues, in my opinion, for .NET 6 was there was a lack of ability to either define attributes easily onto your minimal APIs. Now, I've got an example of a traditional web API on screen. You can see that we're making use of controller. Now, the nice thing about this bit of code is that we've got these filters at the top here. By using a custom filter, you are able to add in extra code, which will allow you to perform some pre-request operations. Now, in minimal API in .NET 6, this wasn't possible. And for me, this was a massive red flag for using minimal APIs with .NET 6. Why write a controller endpoint that I might have to potentially refactor to the other way eventually anyway? Now, this has kind of changed within .NET 7. Now, within .NET 7, we have a new feature, which is called a filter. So a filter will allow you to trigger additional code on a per request basis. And this code could be anything from validating request to logging data or whatever it might be. So this is kind of the equivalent to attributes. Now, the other new feature are root groups. Now, this extension will help you organize groups of endpoints with a common prefix. In essence, root groups will allow you to write cleaner code without as much duplication. Combine this with the new output caching middleware in .NET 7 and you can see how you get a lot more features in terms of performance when writing code using minimal APIs. Now, another point that I'd also like to bring up is that in .NET 7, there are also a number of performance fixes and minimal APIs also benefited here as well. So minimal APIs can deal with more requests per second compared to its MVC controller equivalent. 
Now for me, performance is definitely a serious factor into why I might consider choosing one approach versus another. Now, according to research made by fastendpoints.com, mineral APIs have a better mean and ratio throughput compared to their .NET equivalents. So a minimal API can apparently process 35,000 more requests per second than an MVC based controller. Now this kind of makes sense because the MVC pipeline makes use of middleware, filters, controllers, and all of these extra points take extra processing power. So the sad thing is that in .NET 6, I was there raging saying how much I hated it. However, Microsoft obviously listens to the community because in .NET 7, when we have the new filters, root groups, output caching, and we also have performance increases, it's really hard to ignore minimal APIs nowadays. Minimal API is definitely been one of the most controversial new features that have been released in .NET for a while. And I'm definitely interested to hear the community's opinion on it. Are you a former or an against her? And have these new features in .NET 7 convinced you to give it a try? Now, personally, for me, .NET 6 was a no-go for minimal API. However, because we now have filters and the performance benefits, I'm saying that probably minimal API should be your de facto way of building an API. But do what makes you happy. Now, if you have found value from this video, please let me know by hitting on like and helping me with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Now, if you want to learn more about that deep dive session into how to refactor program.cs into a better design paradigm, then on the screen right now, you should see a link to that video. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day wherever you're in this world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.